Um, okay, so as I said, we've got a lot of speakers. Um, I'm the first one, so I can introduce myself uh, with any further ado. Um, in my Twitter description, uh, um, hopefully you, you, you've seen me on social media, I use a quote from a song called Red Shoes that goes, I used to be disgusted, but now I try to be amused. As I think it's kind of good to have a, a sense of humor as we go through this life, you know, it helps. But in the early stages of this general election campaign, I have to tell you, I'm much more disgusted than amused. You see, here today, we're talking about real issues, things that actually matter. As far as I can see, this election that we're, we're in the middle of, or in the early stages of, it's about fake issues. It's about unreal things. And I've had a stomach full of it already. I don't know about you. So let me just talk about the three big parties and what I consider is they're all, all their fake narratives that are being pumped out every day. On Brexit, which let's face it, has dominated British politics for the last three and a half plus years, the big issue, we've got Boris Johnson flogging us May's atrocious deal with a bit of lipstick stuck on it and insisting it's a great new deal. That hashtag gets Brexit done. Does anybody swallow that guff? Anyone? Yeah. Yeah. Of course. So uh, to repeat, no, nobody swallows that kind of nonsense. It's what Johnson is proposing is exactly the same as what Theresa May was proposing, except he has graciously decided to replace the UK wide backstop with the Northern Ireland only backstop. Now, with my accent, you can imagine just how well that's gone down back home. Um, he's placed my part of the UK in the, the single market, in the customs union, under the jurisdiction of the ECJ for uh, up to another six years. Um, and he calls that Brexit. It ain't Brexit. Um, you know, what he's done is he's essentially surrendered. He surrendered Northern Ireland to the European Union. And then he dares to say it's a fantastic deal. Can you imagine how the many Leave voters in Northern Ireland feel today? June, you know, June 23rd, 16, we voted to leave. Now we're, we've been kept in for six more years and told to celebrate. You know, betrayed, sold out and angry. I mean, who would have believed that a conservative and unionist prime minister would create an economic All-Ireland? I mean, even the IRA didn't achieve that. And another thing, just while I'm at it, you know, we don't leave on the 31st of January. That, that's another myth. Do or die, die in a ditch. At best, at best, we will enter transition, which could last for up to conceivably the end of 2022. Um, so this is a fake Brexit that's being flogged, but haven't the Conservative Party embraced it? I mean, all those Spartans, you know that the Spartans in the the European Research Group, the uh, ERG, those brave men, the Jacob Rees-Mogg's, uh, the very erudite Jacob, Steve Baker's, the um, Marc Francois, all of them, mighty Brexiteers, all now swearing blind that it really is Brexit when it's evidently not Brexit. But, of course, if we have any doubt, you know, if anyone was to be cynical and say, well, maybe we should, you know, can we really trust Boris? The, you know, they say, well, yeah, you can. He's a, he's a kind of guy you, you really can trust. Now, come on, seriously. Who in their right mind would trust Boris? Certainly not his first two wives. <laughs> um, and then, of course, we have Labour, the Labour Party. The party of free stuff. Led by the IRA-loving, Marxist-embracing goon Corbyn. Now, Labour want to solve Brexit in a way which is almost comical, certainly surreal. Because, as you know, their big plan is they're going to, if they get elected, uh, pray God they won't, uh, they're going to go to the EU, negotiate a better deal in 12 weeks than the Conservatives have taken three and a half years to negotiate, a deal that will keep us close to the single market, <coughs> close to the customs union, with open borders, they're going to get this deal. And then they're going to put that on a ballot uh, paper versus remain. And then they will campaign 
for Remain. And then we all get free broadband. Uh, yeah, I mean, the good thing about, about Labour is the staggering stupidity of so many around Corbyn. I mean, come on, Diane Abbott as Home Secretary? Are we kidding? Have you seen the quality of the, uh, the people that sit around him on the, uh, the front benches in the Commons? I mean, I've seen more intelligent life, you know, lying at the bottom of ponds. Um, I mean, Labour takes low IQ to a whole new level. But of course, whilst we can laugh at them, and we should, th there's a serious side. I mean, this is a party seething in anti-Semitism. Uh, a, a party that seeks to court the Muslim vote at all costs, and which, to my mind, at a very basic level, is fundamentally anti hates Britain. It's anti-British. That's what Labour is. And then we come to the Liberal Democrats. Ah, right. So, I mean, the biggest irony about this mob led by Swinson is, of course, they're neither liberal nor recognisably democratic. Um, as you know, and I'm only quoting their terminology, they campaigned on bollocks to Brexit, lowering political discourse even further, just when you thought that wasn't possible in this country. Um, Swinson's clear about it. I mean, she couldn't be more blatant. If she was to win the general election, she will revoke Article 50, and so in doing so, she will essentially um, cancel Brexit and thus dismiss the 2016 referendum result. 17.4 million votes don't matter to our Joe. And of course, Joe thinks she's on course to be Prime Minister. Have you seen that? <laughs> you know, the, what an what a, um, bloated monster ego. I mean, the polls show her party getting, I mean, she, she won 12 seats back in 2017. If she gets between 30 and 40, she'll probably be doing quite well. But she thinks she can get 325. And our lovely media indulge her grotesque narcissism. It's wonderful. So there you go, folks. Three fake parties determined to ensure that you never get a real Brexit. And of course, happy enough to bribe you with your own taxes during this election. And they get away with it. So you know, how do they get away with all this fakery? Well, I blame the media. I always do. Um, or rotten corrupt, dystopian, hellhole media that infests a level that Dante could never have even dreamed of. The media that plays along with all these fake parties. You know, they pretend Boris is a tough guy. He's out to deliver a hard Brexit. They pretend that Labour really does cost out its Brexit uh, policies. Um, they believe that we must listen to Joe Swinson because, well, she's a woman. Not that I'm averse to listening to women, Anne-Marie, but... Uh, <laughs> It depends on what they have to say. Um, you know, and you're going to now get, over the next few weeks, you're going to have all these TV debates between these, uh, these clowns, because uh, it is clown world we live in. And you, you will be asked to then risk the next five years of your life based on what promises they make to you. But, but wait, wait. What about, there's, there's, a, there's an elephant in the room. Let's tackle the elephant in the room. The Brexit party. Weren't they going to save the day, having topped the poll at the elections back in May? Well, I'm sorry to have to, to break it to you, but I see them collapsing into almost utter irrelevance. Nigel Farage, as you know, he stood down 317 candidates to ensure that all Tories uh, that held seats in 27 are not challenged, even when some of them are still devout Remainers. And, you know, and it's not just... Um, it's not just those Remainers from 2017 we have to worry about. In the Conservative constituency of Beaconsfield down the south of England, um, that was held by Dominic Grieve, one of the worst, absolutely toxic Remainer. So Boris has kicked him out, and Boris has replaced him. Uh, the prospective candidate is a lady called Joy Morrissey. Now, one of the joys of social media is I get to torture people like Joy Morrissey. <laughs> Because a little examination into Joy Morrissey's history on Twitter reveals a few odd things. Like, for example, in 2016, she campaigned against Donald Trump coming to the United Kingdom. She was a vehement Trump hater. She was a big supporter of open borders. Bring him in. That's what our Joy was saying. And she swears blind that she was an ardent leaver. But oddly enough, she's deleted all our history of tweets leading up to the 2016 gen um, referendum. That's Joy Morrissey, joy to the world. If she gets elected, God help us. 
And of course, back to Nigel. Nigel stood down then, as you saw the other day, a further 37 candidates, mostly in Scotland. Um, so the Brexit party turns out to be just a party of England, a party that stands in some, but not all, Labour areas, and a party now polling nationally around about 5%. It's my view, could be wrong, but I think the Brexit party balloon, looking at all these balloons around the room, the Brexit party balloon has well and truly been popped for all kinds of reasons. Some I understand, some I'm not happy about. But by the time December 12th comes around, I question, don't know about you folks, but I will wonder if they even get one MP elected. Um, I, I doubt it, but we'll see. And then, of course, all the while, this is, this is the thing, the issues that really matter are ignored. You know, so where has the debate been on the crushing effect of open borders immigration? I haven't heard it, have you? I mean, they all whine about the fact that, oh, our NHS is stretching to breaking point, but they never tell you why it's stretching to breaking point. Not, they don't tell you about the millions that have come into this country in the last few years, overwhelming public sector services. You know, they whine about the lack of houses for people, about the classrooms, bulging class, classrooms, but they ignore the, the, the root cause of it. And, and if you listen to Boris Johnson talk about, you know, their Australian style, the Australian point style immigration policy, what's clear is nothing's going to change. You know, under the Conservatives, they're not serious about controlling immigration. There won't be a proper debate about immigration. And of course, if you do talk about immigration instantly, you're a Nazi. Um, talking of which, there's a small matter of Islam. Now, no party wants to talk about that, none of these main parties. Now, I think we should discuss how, or indeed if, Islam can coexist within our pluralist democracies. But instead, all we get is Islamophobia. So, no debate on that. And I could go on, you know, what about the pedo rape gangs that infest our towns and cities? What about the savage practice of FGM? What about the effects of inbreeding and how that costs the NHS millions? But we can't talk about these things and we won't be allowed to talk about them during this election. Instead, we're gonna talk about free broadband. What about the tsunami of illegals pretending to be asylum seekers? You know, <laughs> cross, the, like, an, um, or it should be actually, armada would be a better word. An armada of illegals uh, crossing the channel in their dinghies and then being put up in lovely, warm, cozy accommodation, free food, and all care if you, the taxpayer. You're not gonna, that won't be discussed. Um, and then a topic which happily we will be talking about later, the trans agenda, which by any objective standard is perverting the innocence of childhood. That'll not be talked about. What about the lunacy of the Greta Thunberg, climate emergency, climate emergency. How dare you laugh, sir? How dare you laugh at Greta? No debate, just silence. So that's why I am pleased to be here today with Anne-Marie and with For Britain. At least you guys will talk about matters of substance rather than polished inanities. And of course, you're gonna be labeled as Nazis and fascists for doing so, but it doesn't matter. Listen, it doesn't matter what people call you, and you know this. And actually, if I'm being really honest, it doesn't even matter that we all know Boris Johnson will betray Brexit and the biggest vote in British history. It doesn't totally matter. What matters is something Katie Hopkins mentioned, uh, something so fundamental. What matters is that everyone in this room says true to their principles, that you all recognize that we live in an age when telling truth makes you the enemy of the state. The, these are the things that matter. Um, and that's why I believe, again, if I'm being brutally honest with you, I think we live now at a time of what is required is political resistance. Resistance to the fakery, to the dishonesty, uh, to the dystopian hell in many regards we're being pushed into. And that's why we should resist Resist the easy lies and stand up for tough truths. And you know, we owe that to ourselves. We owe that to our families. And for the best possible reason of all, we owe it 
for Britain. Thank you all very much.